by God's grace. We are all facing a very tough time right now. The novel coronavirus has been around us since March 2020. Now the situation is worse. We have many queries and tensions regarding this pandemic. So today we have with us a renowned doctor, Dr. Ashfaq Muhammad, who in spite of his busy schedule, he is ready to spare some time for us. He is a professor of surgery at Kasturba Medical College, Mangalore, currently heading the Unit A at Government Bendlock District Hospital, Mangalore, and also a consultant laparoscopic surgeon of repute. He has been handling COVID patients since the onset of the pandemic and is knowledgeable about this disease. He will be able to give an insight into the ongoing pandemic and panic and be able to answer our queries and clear our doubts. So, without wasting much time, let's get started. Good evening everybody, uh, first at the offset let me thank uh, Sahel for uh, inviting me to join for this discussion on COVID-19, it's uh, such an honor to be a part of it and especially when youngsters, kids like him are becoming tech savvy and they are having their own YouTube channel and they want to spread uh, uh, good information to people of his generation. Thank you, sir. It's my pleasure, sir. We are lucky to have you with us. So, my first question is, we often get back lethal or viral infection. But why this coronavirus is so dangerous unlike the rest? See, as to why corona is dangerous compared to other infections, we have had infections. It's not that we have not had. We have got infections like tuberculosis, malaria, dengue, leptospira, even earlier we used to have smallpox, chickenpox, which has killed people, which has killed a lot of people and which has killed uh, wiped out population. We, when we talk about the Spanish flu or the first pandemic. Now, with regards to other diseases, it has been studied and we have found out what can, how we can prevent it, how we can uh, control it and how to treat it. Now, Corona is a new variant. This is a new variant. It is communicable. It can go from one person to other. We are yet to study this organism and the disease fully. And slowly, yes, we will get control of the disease. And we should have to wait and see the impact. It is dangerous because we are still in the infancy of this disease. So it will take us time to study this disease, study the virus, and uh, try to come and find out the treatment for this. The last virus which caused a lot of uh, problems in the medical field was the HIV virus causing AIDS. So around 20-25 years back, uh, everybody was scared of AIDS. When we talk about the patient is HIV positive, we were a little wary of that patient and we were trying to take all sorts of precautions as a surgeon we should do that. But now we are not uh, that much concerned about it, even though we know it is a communicable disease, it can transmit to the blood. Not in other way. So only there is a selective risk group people for getting that disease from that virus. But now this is something which can spread from anybody to anybody. From one person to another person either via fomites, that is some plants or things which we touch or through the air itself. That's the reason why it's dangerous. Till we study and try to get control of it, I think we have to be wary. Yeah, with regards to children getting a lot of viral infection and bacterial infection and currently the current generation are not getting that much of corona infection. Why is this happening this way? See, normally children develop immunity over a period of years as they grow up. From the time they start going to school, the kindergarten and getting exposed to various individuals various uh, children coming together in the schools and in the other places of uh, community centers. They get exposed to various in bacterial and viral infection. That's why a child will usually have three to four episodes of upper respiratory tract infection, what we called as common cold. 
and uh, they keep developing this infection and over a period of years they get immunity and even uh, bacterial infection they get stomach upset because they eat with their hands they put things with the mouth so this cross infection keeps happening within the community and now what's happened is with the corona coming in that is the last year in march 2020 there was an absolute shutdown there was a lockdown and once this lockdown has happened children are not getting exposed to most of these bacteria and virus including corona they are not going to school they are not going to markets they are not even going outdoors so and most of the adults who are with the children the parents or the uncles or aunts they are all into wearing mask so mask will prevent not just corona they will prevent all other viral and bacterial infection which is airborne so the common cold upper respiratory tract infections are not there and also this hand to mouth transmission which happens due to handling of food or eating with parents now everybody is washing their hands and most of the individuals by most of the time by washing hands and wearing a mask you can prevent the infection that's why the incidence is less in children as of today compared to the adults because adults are going out they're going about doing their work they're going outside exposing themselves and interacting with other people and as of now the children are confined to their houses and the adults are taking precaution that's why the incidence is less but we kids are not allowed to go out to play or to school why so that's a good question sahil as to why we are not allowing children to go outside to the playground and play with the other children this is the only reason being now we are in confinement we are maintaining social distancing so if you are allowed to go outside it's very difficult to control a child because you need to play you need to play <coughs> you will be sharing the same things for example if you are playing cricket you will be sharing the bat you will be sharing the ball you might be sharing wearing the same gloves or if you are playing football it's a contact sports you will be coming in close contact with each other so you don't know where the child is other child is coming from that is the exact reason why we are not allowing children to go to school in school also you go there you all of you sit together in one single room 40 50 students together during games period you all go outside and play together it is going to be difficult to control the infection so the most important thing as i said earlier is social distancing hand washing and wearing a mask and it is not easy to wear a mask and play outside it is not uh, that easy and it doesn't serve the purpose mm. that's the reason why children are not allowed to go outside now the world has come a complete circle earlier we were shouting and telling the children as parents you what you are sitting inside always on the tv always on the laptop always with the mobile go outside and play physical games now since 2020 we have taken a u turn and now we are telling children don't go outside don't play with your friends sit inside watch tv do your work and all the classes everything are on the mobile and on the computer this is The, the the world has turned hospitality it is just a matter of time we will revert back to normal so i hope things improve and you kids will be going back to the school and going back to the playground We're injected with many vaccines why not corona virus always immunizing the child uh, it's still told in the western world a child once the child is born we give immunity immunization to almost around 59 diseases and it is preventive it prevents these diseases so it may be bacterial it might be viral commonest among them immunization we give are for the measles mumps we give for rubella we give for polio we the smallpox has been eradicated by uh, vaccination we give pneumo vaccination also what is called as pneumococcal vaccination so every year we keep uh, we might have to give so even in india every child is vaccinated to more than 30 infections and it is quite effective now why as you we are asking why don't we give corona vaccination to why are why didn't we give it to all the children as with other vaccination we should have given them. but we were not aware of it this variant of the corona virus came into this world and into the medical field causing infection only in uh, december 2019 it started in wuhan in china and by the time it came to the rest of the world it was already 
The effect of it and the impact of it, of it was seen only during March, April 2020. And we need time to develop a vaccine. First, we need to find out the organism, then we need to study the organism, and the next step is to learn how to treat the organism, and the final step is, the most important one, is try to prevent the disease caused by the organism. So that is by doing, by giving vaccination. So now thankfully, a lot of companies, a lot of institutions have come out with effective vaccination against the coronavirus. So now we are trying to immunize the world population so as to get this disease under control. And yes, in future, this might be part of the universal immunization program. Every child born might be given along with all other vaccination, they might be given the corona vaccination too, so that we don't have such pandemic in the future. As to why only one virus is sufficient to cause an infection, you said it enters the body. Yes, it enters the body through the air tract, through the, your breathing, it will go into the lung at once it enters. See, virus is an organism which needs the host to replicate. It cannot survive outside. It's not like a fungus or a bacteria. It can survive outside a non-living structure also. A virus indefinitely cannot survive outside. It has to have a host in which it survives and it replicates. So once it enters the human system, it is it can replicate because we too have DNAs and RNAs. So you have a DNA virus, you have RNA virus. It programs the human cell to divide itself and multiply. So that is what happens within the body. One can become two, two becomes four. It's a, it uh, doubles continuously. It is like a, uh, squaring itself. One will become two, two divides into four, four divides into eight, eight becomes sixteen. So you can think how it is growing. It is not one to one. One doesn't become two and three and four. The growth is always exponential and it is it can grow rapidly. So and it always happens within the human body. It needs a living system for it to replicate. And they can replicate. This is called as the viral doubling time and they keep on doubling with time. Are we humans stronger than or weaker than the other animals, like cats, like the dogs, as you said, the virus is infecting us and not them. As of now, it is causing havoc among the human species. Our species is affected, it's brought into the human species and it is causing a pandemic, it is causing havoc. It is not that this virus does not affect animals. It is rumored that this virus came from an animal source. Most of these virus, they will be confined. There are a lot of virus. Even the same way I talked about HIV earlier. It was there in the rhesus monkeys in Africa. So from the monkeys, somehow when this monkey started interact with human, it comes and it passed on to the human and it created havoc in the humans. In the same way, this coronavirus was there in the wildlife. That's why they say in the wildlife market of Wuhan district. This Chinese had the habit of eating exotic meat. So there were a lot of these exotic meats which was bought from the wild and brought into the human market. This is where the interaction between the wild and the human happened. And that is where the virus transmitted and jumped from a wild animal into the human. And once it's come to the human, it has caused this pandemic. It is not that they cannot affect the cats and dogs or the bats. Usually it is bat is the carrier. Usually most of this virus, even when we had this Nepal virus in breakout in Kerala recently, this or the bird flu, usually the bat is the carrier. So it can affect the animals too, but now it has come to the human system and this is creating havoc here. So friends, for the time being, let's stop now. We shall continue tomorrow. Hope this video was helpful. If so, please give your valuable feedbacks. Until I come with the second part of this video, this is Shail Abdullah signing off. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.